Good to see everybody. Praise the Lord. Wonderful to see the children in, in God's service. Amen. Amen. Just pretend I'm a child, too. I used to be a child. Believe it or not, I used to be little. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's, what's so funny? I was just telling the truth. <laughs> I used to be small. Uh, let's pray one more time, just thanking God for our children and just the beauty that has been shown through them. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you touch our children, that you bless them with gifts, and they pour them back on you for you're worthy. Lord, we love you, and Lord, we're all children, not knowing where to go, not knowing how to go out or come in. And we pray for your spirit right now to bless us as we just discuss for a few minutes how faithful you are and how worthy you are. No one can do this without your spirit. So, Lord, I pray that you help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for our scripture reading, uh, Psalm 127, uh, beautifully read. I'll read it again in your hearing. I don't need it. It's okay. <clears throat> Psalm 127, Song of Degrees for Solomon. It sa he says, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that have his quiver, hath his quiver full of them. And I like what, how you read it, Nathan. They shall, shall not be ashamed when they stand in the gate. Uh, this one says they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. They won't be ashamed. God will keep them. God will bless our children. Uh, how many hunters do we have out there? Do you do bow and arrow hunting out here? I've seen some bows and I've seen some arrows. I wasn't quite good with the aim. And our children at school, we played a little game the other day, um, trying to teach them just what sin is and how it's falling short of the glory of God, like Romans 3 and verse 23 says. Sin, hamartia in the Greek. I wonder if any other children remember what that means. Can I hear it? Okay, just shout it out. What was that? Missing the mark. So you shooting an arrow, and man, you can't. Are we even on the target? Are we, what are we getting, 100 points? What kind of points do we get without Jesus if we shoot our arrows? We hit people in the street. We, we're all over the place. We're not even in the target area. But with God, we could do all things. And it was amazing to see the children go from not being able to hit anything. And just like God was teaching us a lesson, okay, let's do it with God. Let's do it with prayer. And little Oliver and little Carson step up and hit the bullseye on 100, setting the tone for the room, right? And ev everyone was able to hit the target. We had a couple other people, but let's give the little guys a, a, little, a, a little glory today. You know, God gets glory through the little people, right? What would, we, would, we, would we tell the story of David and Goliath if David was twice as big as Goliath? Would that be a powerful story? Why is that, such, why is that so meaningful to us? Because here, here it is, this child, really. David was essentially a child going up against this giant. Not just a grown man, but a giant. And the, giants, the giant did fall that day because God works. As they say, uh, big things come in what kind of packages? Small packages. Don't, don't deny God the, the power and the privilege to bless you, to show off with you just because you're small. And small is not always stature. Small could be in standing. Small could be the marginalized, people that don't mean much to others, but God will work through them. And I just wanted to remind us today that God is faithful. God is what? He who calls you, he who calls our children is faithful. We raise children and we raise our children to be able to live life. We really don't raise children, we raise adults. You know that, right? We're raising adults. These are little adults in the making. And we want to raise them to fear and serve the Lord. What do you say? 
You read Psalm 127. It says children are like arrows. The one who has the arrow, the one who is aiming, he has a purpose for what he sends, whether it's to hit a deer, whatever the purpose may be for that arrow. Think of it as God, not just the parents. The Bible says that the parents of those children are happy because they have them like arrows for their quiver. What do we want our children to accomplish? We want them to be successful, right? We want them to be able to serve God and our fellow man. But if God gives us an example in the Bible that tells us that children are like arrows and happy is the man or happy is the father, happy is the mother that has his quiver full of them. We see another little arrow in the quiver over there. I see you, Micah. I didn't expect to see you at church today, brother. <laughs> Micah's attending church from an early age, right? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't too long ago since he came into the world and he's already in the house of God. Someone, come on, say amen, somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's a little arrow that God intends to use for his glory and for man's blessing. So if God says that our children are like arrows for us. What can those little arrows do in the hand of an almighty God? Nothing can stop them. Nothing can stop them. And I thought about it. What could I talk about? Are there many stories in the Bible that talk about children? There are quite a few. And uh, we could have talked about a few arrows today. There's a little arrow over in Israel that we could have talked about, a little servant girl whose job it was to minister to the king, I mean, to a, a general's wife. And that general, general was a powerful man, mighty, but he had one problem. It says, the Bible says, but he was a leper. And it almost canceled out everything that came before that. All the acclamations and the pride and everything that was built up in his story was just canceled out by one sentence, but he was a leper. But I'm not going to talk about that little girl today, but she was an arrow that God used to bring that man to the knowledge of the Lord. David, he was an arrow. He used a slingshot, but God used this arrow to defeat a giant and to, to, to tell the children of Israel that God is worthy to be trusted. Well, there are other stories. Little Samuel growing up in a crooked house. Remember him? And God preserves him. God used that little arrow to, to speak a message to his people, Israel. But I want us to turn to John chapter 6. We're going to talk about just one arrow in particular today that God used. There's a little boy in a crowd. John chapter 6. Now, not only is he little, but he's in a crowd of thousands. There were 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And here this little boy is, his good Jewish mother. Packed him a lunch before he left home, right? Do you remember what that lunch was? Two fish and five barley loaves. Now, why is the Bible telling us that it's barley loaves? It wasn't even wheat. You know, barley was an a, a in, in, inferior uh, type of bread. It was for the poor. So this was a little, it looks like a little poor kid. He's out there with his two fish and his barley loaves. And we have some questions that we want to look at, uh, looking at this story. So turn to John chapter 6. And notice what's going on in John chapter 6. It's an awesome uh, chapter, by the way. It opens up with people running after Jesus, and it ends with people running from him. We're not going to get to that point, but we're going to look at some of the glory moments. And I'm reading John chapter 6 in verse 1. It says, after these things, Jesus went over the the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude, a big crowd, followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, those who follow him. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he says unto Philip, and I love this, it's a question. You know, when divinity asks humanity a question, something's going on. The question was, from where shall we buy bread that these may eat? The next verse says, and this Jesus said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus knew it. This was a setup for Jesus to shine. 
to, for, for him to bring glory to his father. He knew what he would do. Verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread. Any scholars out there, how much is that? 200 penny worth. If you had 200 penny worth of bread out there, how much bread would that be? It would be like eight months wages worth of bread. Philip said eight months wages of bread is not sufficient for them. It's thousands of people out there, maybe 20,000. That every one of them may take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother said to him, there is a lad here, a little boy, which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. And here's a question that humanity throws back on divinity. Well, what is that among so many? What does God need to show up and show out? He doesn't need a lot. The more he has to work with, the less you'll believe that it's him who does it. So this is a perfect opportunity for God to get the glory and God to get it alone. Praise God for Andrew. He's always bringing people to Jesus, right? He's the one who introduced Peter. He brought Peter. He brought some of his fellow fishermen. And he brings this little boy with this little lunch. But I'm here to tell you that a little bit is a lot when it's in God's hands. We're going to see evidence of that in our children's lives. And we praise God for those moments. And we want to build up a solid foundation for our children. So when they grow up that they will not what? Depart from it. Nothing like a Christian upbringing, you know. And I don't really necessarily have the strong Christian upbringing that I wish I would have had, but I had enough to know that I didn't belong in some places. I had the Holy Spirit following me when I was in places that I shouldn't be. People would look at me and I know it's Holy Spirit speaking through them saying, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. Our children need to know that angels are dispatched on their pathways. When they wake up, angels are taking note of our children. Do you know that young people today? Angels are worried about and looking at what you're doing, making sure that you are safe, making sure that you have everything that you need to be able to accomplish the purposes that God has sent you for. Well, I'm not going to read the rest, and you probably know what's going to happen. Jesus takes some loaves, and I want us to think about school. How many of us enjoy school? How many of us enjoy helping our children with school? really going to school again when your children are in school, amen? That's why we praise God for in-class learning rather than, <laughs> we, we, got a, we have an appreciation for our teachers and I wanna pray for our, all our teachers today and all those who work with children. We have a greater appreciation for them when school is closed and we have what they call distance learning. It got quiet in here. <laughs> we have an appreciation for them because they put up with a lot. It is not easy to be an educator today. It's not easy to be a teacher because you're so much more. You sign up to be a teacher, but you, you're an auntie, you're a parent, you're a caregiver, you're a nurse in many cases. You're a, you're, you're, you're a cook sometimes. Sometimes you're feeding children and taking care of them and sacrificing that they will get what they need to be able to succeed and flourish. Well, Jesus has a crowd of people out. The question was put to him, what is two fish and five barley loaves among so many? Jesus, of course, knew what he would do, so he was not surprised. He was not flustered at all. I just want to ask a question related to school. Mariah, Sienna, if you had, what's your favorite snack? I don't know, Pop-Tart, you like a Pop-Tart? I don't buy you many of those, but what's that? Uh, something that it could be, well, pickles, I don't know. <laughs> can we go with the Pop-Tart? <laughs> a strudel, something sweet. Come on, someone, a honey bun. Someone name something. A honey bun? Okay, let's say uh, two honey buns come in a pack. You have two honey buns. How many honey buns do you have? I come along, I say, Sianna, what you got there? No, you don't have a honey bun. How many do you have? 
And I say, Sienna, do you love your uncle? Yes, I do. Oh, wow, that's great. I love you, too. You know what? Can I relieve you of one of those honey buns? Hey, <laughs> Be careful when you deal with Sienna. But if you give me one, if you're kind enough and humanity is fortunate enough that you would give your uncle one of those honey buns, how many are you left with? What do we call that? Subtraction? Sharing. It's sharing. <laughs> All right, I like that. But in a mathematical equation, that would be subtraction. I was always taught, you know, I love to share. I had a lot of friends when I was little, and it seems like our house was the center of attention for that community. It was the sanctuary almost. And if I went outside with popcorn or with treats, I would count how many people were outside to make sure I could divide it up evenly. And sometimes there were so many people outside that I said, you know what, I don't have enough to give it to all of them, so I'm going to just leave this here. I didn't want someone to be left out, but Jesus does not have that problem. The Bible says that he gave, the, he, he blessed the bread. He blessed it. He thanked God for it. And he began to distribute it. Now, how much did we start with? How many fish? Five loaves. This is what he blessed, and he began to distribute it among his disciples. How many disciples does Jesus have? He had 12. Now, there were people sitting out there in the thousands. A lunch that began, I mean, uh, uh, he, he begins with two fish, five loaves. Now, when you go out and you spread that out among other people, that's not subtraction. That's not addition. We would call that division. When you divide... The thing that you're dividing, does it get bigger or smaller? Is there more or less? If I divide it, it looks like about 40 people in this room, and we had a pie, and I cut it up in 40 slices, right? Everyone gets how many pieces of pie? Just one. But with Jesus, division turned into multi multiplication. And no disrespect to the math that Ms. Ros Mrs. Rosanna is teaching you. It's good math. You need to study that. You need to learn it. But God really doesn't care so much about that when we're dealing with the things of God. How many of us know and can tell our children that 90 percent of your money with God is more than 100 percent without him? God has a different kind of math and he's showing the disciples this. And he started out with two fish and five loaves and they end up feeding probably tw close to 20,000 people. And they have 12 baskets left over. Look at what God will do. And it all started with who? Andrew? Started with a little boy, a little arrow that God placed in that scene, in that crowd, to be able to bring him glory and teach us how his kingdom works. I want to meet that little lad one day. We serve a God who makes a little a lot when it's in his hands. And like the old song used to say, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. God is going to use our children. Here's the call of another arrow, Jeremiah, when he was just a young boy. I'm reading Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 8. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the womb, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified, sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. God knows his plan for our children. He knows his plan for you, Nathan. He knows his plan, Micah. He knows what he, he brings us in this earth for, and it's to bring him glory. Jeremiah says, then I said, ah, oh, Lord God, I am but a child. I cannot speak. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for you shall go to all that I shall send thee. Remember, he sends us. We are targets of his, of his love. But it's beautiful when the target becomes an arrow. He wants to show love to someone else through you, through a child, through children. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord. And I want to remind our children and those who work with them that God is with you. God has promised us. He said, I will contend with those who contend with you. That word means to fight. And I will save your children. 
Many of us are looking around and there's empty spaces in this church and we would love to attach a missing child to that space. But hold on to that promise. God says, I will fight and I will save your children. We serve a God that makes up for our insufficiency. Have you ever been insufficient? Children realize it. I keep trying to, I don't want to stumble around this. I don't want to stand on it either because now I'm just being ridiculous, right? But this, we just made up for your insufficiency by putting this down here. You understand what I'm saying, kids? When you got up here, you were too short. You didn't want to be down here. So like God, we put something here for you to make up for your lack. That's what God does. Has anyone ever been made up for their lack? Has God ever done that for you? He does that for me, and I'm a big man. But next to him, I lack so much. I lack so much, Elder. I don't even, I don't even come close. I can't even get to his toenails, like, like Rosanna said the other day. When I look at him, when I, I may look at you, or you may look at someone else and compare yourself, and you may feel pretty good. But when you look at Jesus, you can't even reach his toes. He's so high, but I'm so thankful for a ladder called grace that allows us to get where Jesus is. What about you? When God sends arrows like David, Jeremiah, or the little servant girl, or this little boy uh, in this crowd, there's another arrow that I think of. It reminds us of the ultimate arrow. Didn't God send his son? They call him Jesus. John 17 verse 3 says, and this is life eternal, that, you know, that they know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast, what's that word? Sent. Children, you are sent. God has a purpose for you. He has an address that he's going to fling you or shoot you to, many of them, to be a blessing in the lives of others. I want us to all turn as I close to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we want to look at verses 23 and 24. And I want to appeal to you now. I know Nathan will close with prayer, but I want to appeal to us. If you want, if you want to acknowledge that God has chosen you, and this is for our children or those who work with children. Anybody working with children here? I know my wife is an educator, Miss Rosanna, Mrs. Rosanna. We're very thankful for everything that she does. But anybody else who works with children? All right. Oh, Bobby. We see Bobby here. Anyone else? I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but if you would just stand. If you're a child or you're someone who work with children, how about you stand? We want to pray for you. We see you, Dr. Ray. <laughs> All right, all children stand, and those who, of, of us who work with children. We want to bless and pray for our children today. First Thessalonians, I want to pray, I want to read this word over you. First Thessalonians, if you... If you worry or you kind of get a little shy when you think about the, the wonderful calling that God has on your life, I'm just here to remind you that God is faithful who calls you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, fully. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you who will also do it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your calling. We thank you, Lord, that you have a purpose for your word that you send and for little arrows that you send. Thank you for our children, Lord. Pray that you continue to pour out your spirit on them, that these memories will be filed in a bank that maybe years from now that they could draw on to know of your goodness and your, 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 your mercy and your love. And so we pray for our children, Lord, that they will never forget how great you are and how much you can do with them when they trust their lives to you. Lord, may they always remember that a little is a lot when it is in your hands. Keep these children in the palm of your hands and help us as a community to continue to raise them in the fear and admonition of the true and living God. And Lord, all those who are standing, Lord, we pray for a measure of, of faith 
and trust, Lord, that you will do what you said you will do. Pray for Mrs. Rosanna and all our educators and those who are standing before you, Lord. They realize their lack, but we're thankful that just like this step stool, you will make up their lack, that you will bless them, that you will fill their words with your words, fill their hearts with your sentiment, and may our hearts break for our children, that we would see them and not have rest until we know that their calling and election is sure. Bless our school, bless the children that attend public school. We all need you, Heavenly Father. And we make a commitment, Lord, to take care of these little arrows, that you may send them where you would have them to go. And we thank you for your blessing, in Jesus' name, and for his sake, amen and amen. We now want to sing 573, I'll Go Where You Want Me to Go. Beautiful message for our children. I want you to listen up to this. <laughs> 